Ensure you have connected and prepared for testing before you continue. You will need to prepare the Phonics FP35. Open the lid and connect the hearing aid to the coupler by using the small tubing at the end. Adjust as necessary so that the hearing aid microphone is placed into the centre circle of the loudspeaker as shown. Turn on the hearing aid and close the lid. On the screen, in the top left, it should read SPL for sound pressure level. To change this, press the menu button. A small menu on the screen will be displayed, and on the menu display is Gain. Change the option on the row by pressing left or right arrow keys once. It now indicates on the small menu display SPL. Press the menu button to enter the changes on the screen. It now reads on the screen in the top left SPL. Above the F2 button on the screen should read Curve 1. If not, press F2 repeatedly until Curve 1 is shown. Above the F4 button on the screen should read Digital Speech, shown as DIG SPCH. If not, press F4 repeatedly until Digital Speech is shown. The source should be 65 dB. If not, Press the up and down arrow keys to adjust the level as necessary. Press the start-stop button to create a response curve of the hearing aid. Press start-stop to freeze the curve. Open the test chamber and connect the hearing aid to the direct audio input lead from the Con Evans CRM220 receiver using the connecting shoe as shown. Where applicable, in the extras section, a video on how to fit the battery drawer is included. Place the hearing aid and coupler carefully onto a soft surface. Ensure that the hearing aid is on the correct program. Place the lapel microphone of the transmitter onto the centre circle of the loudspeaker, as shown, using the elastic band to help hold it in place. Note, elastic bands are only to be used for holding lapel microphones and not the coupler as this causes damage to the test chamber. The FP35 has two additional couplers, the HA1 and the calibration coupler. These placed together, or a type C battery, have similar acoustic properties to the HA2 coupler currently connected to the hearing aid. To give the most accurate frequency response, these can be used as shown. Be aware that if not used, the response curve may have a small discrepancy in the lower frequency region which can sometimes be considered not essential. Ensure the lapel microphone lead is positioned so that it comes out from the lower corner of the test chamber, as shown, to minimise damage to the lead. Press the F2 button. Above the F2 button on the screen, it should read Curve 2. If not, press F2 repeatedly until Curve 2 is shown. Above the F4 button on the screen should read Digital Speech, shown as DIG SPCH. If not, press F4 repeatedly until Digital Speech is shown. The majority of digital hearing aids are non-linear, and therefore source should be set to 65 dB. However, if programmed to behave linearly, source should be set to 70 dB. Press the up and down arrow keys to adjust the level as necessary. This is the CRM220 receiver. If we look at the side, the environmental microphone adjustment is marked as E. The transmitter microphone adjustment, also known as the gain control, is marked as TX. Using the manufacturer's adjusting tool, adjust the gain control anti-clockwise to decrease the grain. Looking at the top of the receiver, the letter indicates the frequency channel B. Moving the toggle switch to the channel B position turns the receiver on. Looking at the transmitter, on the side is the external microphone socket connected to the lapel microphone. Looking at the top of the transmitter, the channel letter needs to match the receiver, which is B in this case. Turn the toggle switch to the on position and the LED should flash for a few seconds. Back to the FP35. Press the start-stop button to create a response curve of the personal radio system. And on the receiver, 
using the manufacturer's adjusting tool, turn the gain control slowly clockwise whilst observing the frequency response on the screen. Increase the gain control until the curves match as closely as possible. Press star stop to freeze the curve. You should have matched the level and shape of the hearing aid to the personal FM system. You can continue to create a third curve to observe the output of the personal radio system at 80 dB. However, due to the increase in wide dynamic range compression, WDRC, and other variables inherent in the hearing aid and personal FM system, this curve is not as informative and usually masks the two comparative curves when regularly checking a system, making it less clear. Press print to save the frequency response curves for future comparisons. It is possible to save the responses to a computer via a serial connection lead, and an example of this is shown in the extras section.